Yeah, it seemed like I was family was six. Hey, I seen possessed. Like I have multiple personal, multiple persons disorder. All that crazy stuff. I was young. How do you? How do you, at that young of an age? How did you keep it get together? Did you, um, like you said, you cope with uh, drugs and the satanic Bible, or what, what happened? Um, let me tell you. I cope with drugs, definitely. But at the same time, I cope with many drugs. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I know that I had took a couple, too many drugs and had overdosed and killed over. And I just happened to still be alive when I woke up to some chest paddles. (laughs) So, yeah, that was on purpose, though. But, um, in the amount of three times in my life, I had just deceased, deceased. About two by the hands of my own family, one by my own. His life just wasn't doing it for me. But let me tell you, death is a peaceful place. But at the same time, it makes you appreciate life. You can make a mark on this on this world right here. You can make a mark and lead this world, and that mark will remain. Yeah. Time, something stuck in time forever, set in stone. Um, now you said you you died three times. Do you think uh, each time you you died, possibly you might have brought something back with you? That's what I'm thinking happened because the third time was from my own hands, as I said, and it was crazy. Like perfect. because yeah, because I was I well. The pills they give you, the, the psychiatric ward, uh, one of them specifically named Concerta gives you suicidal thoughts and no hunger and all that stuff like that. It's basically like you're thinking like half a demon. It's crazy. You're not hungry, you know, and you're thinking about killing over, shit like that. That's one of the symptoms of the pill and shit. That's crazy. So out-of-body experience, literally, visiting what is not in this world. And I had a story about that, about the uh, visiting. There's four hells. There's actually more, but I visited four. It's like astral projection almost. Like It's like you're there. You're feeling this journey. You're feeling this journey. You're walking through these, these many obstacles, and you're still alive to tell it. That's crazy to me. <laughs> Yeah. What's out there is is real. What's out there, not of this world, is real. Almost like a, almost like a, a fucking if, if if an astronaut were to go to another planet and then come back and report about it, you know, um, you've been to a place that very few people have been to and come back from. You know what I'm saying? Were, were you scared in there? You said it was peaceful, but were you scared at all? Man, I didn't have a choice. I was gone. I mean, I was nervous as hell, sh- shaking up. Yeah, I sure the hell was scared, man. I was like, this place, you know, am I going to be able to come back, to, come back to you know normal life? I mean, and you can see, you can see like no other. You can hear like no other. It's not your human body anymore. It's your spirit. Your spirit is way more advanced than your human body. You can, hear, you can hear better, you can see better, you can taste better, all that, you can feel better. All the illness is gone, all that crazy stuff. It's just like it's the afterlife, to be honest. Your body is in limbo, and you can visit places you never thought you would, walk through things you never thought you could. It's almost, man, it's some diabolical thinking. That got that got me into more studies about what I'm into. I started learning more about stuff that may have came back with me. When uh, now this this was a suicide attempt, right? Yeah, it sure was. Now, what, what did you do with with drugs or, or? Xanax, a whole bottle, whole script, pink footballs. Them things will take you out and you don't feel it. So you, 
whole bottle. You wake up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's if you ever had one of them things, they make you sleep. They make you sleep, and that's what they're for anyway. I mean, they killed all anxiety in me. I guess that's why I woke up. I woke up from um. I woke up motivated as hell because that's what they do. But no fear, no um, no motivation. You know, you got full motivation to do whatever you need to do. Yeah, no fear. Xanax was always my drug of choice. It was a perfect choice, actually. Yeah, yeah. You um, now when you when you survived, I mean, you obviously, I mean, you you was wanting to get out of here for good. Did you, so you didn't expect to survive? No, I didn't. Because, look, my family didn't expect me to survive when they did it. You know, I was young as hell. I was way before 15 when I had, they tried to take my damn life. It just so happens I, I woke back up. Like, each time in the hospital, it's like, what the hell's going on around this? You know what I'm saying? I, if I, I probably would have been better off is what I was thinking. But after the third time, I said, you know what? It's, it, you know, there's enough of that going on. You know, I ain't got, ain't got time to be uh, dying off. And But I was able to take three visits. I said, man, you got to be kidding me, man. I was able to take three visits to these beautiful places that exist not in this world, not even here. You won't find no place like this. Maria Cabins that don't even come close. So this, you you dying three separate occasions, this was before you even got the Satanic Bible. This was way before, yeah. Okay, okay, that, that makes a lot more sense now. So so you, you're, you're going to these different dimensions, just tell me if I got it right, and you're seeing these different things, bringing things back with you. Um, what... What what did you bring back with you, uh, and what was the first encounter you had with something that you brought back from the other side? Well, after the after I myself tried to kill over, I may have brought back a spirit that looked like my great grandfather. I was I was in Fort Washington, Maryland, and I had made all my CDs at my folks' house. I chose the basement, <laughs> and uh, yeah, when I when I when I did survive this, I've been seeing sights of my grand great grandfather. I was like, I'm seeing him standing at this door. I know I, I know he's gone. Oh, what the hell is he doing? Stand at the door. He turns around, walks away. I walk behind him. There's no one there. It's like my human eye kicked in and said, you know, you're not gonna see this. So it's like I have a hidden third eye somewhere, and I can see it temporarily, and then it goes away when I try to see. It. So I'm thinking I, I took something that looks something might have been deceiving me at the time, because these demons they can disguise themselves as something that loves you, and they will trick you. They can trick you, but at the time. I'm, I'm, man, like you know, Xanax kind of messes your memory up too. Messes your memory up. Sometimes you don't even remember what the hell's going on. Sometimes you have done things that you don't even know that you've done. People are telling you you've done it. So I, I honestly think I brought something with me, but I remember the journey, and it's like my music when I make it, it speaks the journey. It speaks the journey of the parts I don't remember and the and the parts that I do remember. It's it's like I'm reading my own book. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's like you you you're bringing up stuff that you might have you know what I'm saying um soaked in when you were when you were there when you were dead. Um you said now you, you saw an image of your deceased or you saw like a, what you thought was your deceased grandfather. Um, but yeah. you, you figured out that that was a, a demon pretending to be him. Yeah, because I've been seeing things ever since. Ever since. Ever since that day. I'm just seeing, I'm just chilling. I look to the left and then, you know, 
ever, ever since that day, after that, I've been seeing and hearing my name being called to me, my actual, my actual real name. Who, who's in this? Who's playing games, you know? Who, who's whispering my name, you know? Who, I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's someone playing a joke on me, but <laughs> ain't nobody in the house with me <laughs> that day. So, yeah, um, then that day, my, my hand had went through glass window, all kind of crazy stuff started happening. My hand went through, I went to close the window, my hand went straight through the window. I said, wow, what are the odds of that? My thumb's hanging off. So um, I had to go to the hospital and get my um, thumb reattached. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, share. Also go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.